Ah, oh, that roasted turkey was delicious. Yeah, we still enjoy it in 2150. The world's not that different today. Most things that were so common in the 21st century still exist in the 22nd. Turns out there's only one major change today, and it's the water supply. It all started with field irrigation using energy drinks. And even though it wasn't a success, they had another idea. Now, they want to replace all the water in the supply system with hand sanitizer. They just think it could be better, cleaner, and safer for everyone. They also thought it could help with greasy roasted turkey plates. Let's see what sanitizer normally contains. The first and most important ingredient is alcohol to help tear off that fatty coating any bacteria have. When a germ gets in contact with alcohol, its coat bursts off, and it can no longer cause you any harm since it's not active anymore. To make the sanitizer truly effective, the alcohol should be at least 60%. Then it'll finish off almost all the germs around you. Sometimes, to make sure there are no germs left on your body surface or wherever you apply it, the alcohol proof might be higher, up to 95%. Want to peep into our pipes? Well, when the sanitizer flows out of the pipes, replacing the water we usually have, the temperature matters too. Alcohol evaporates at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is super hot. So if the hand sanitizer loses its alcohol, it won't do its job. And technically, we'll stop being an actual sanitizer, becoming no more than some water-based liquid. You aren't likely to do your washing up at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, though. You can heat it up to evaporate alcohol and wait for the substance to cool off. It will lose its antibacterial potential, but there's still some water, essential oils, and other things to help you wash those dirty dishes left after a hearty family dinner. The water, I mean the sanitizer, we have in the pipes is lukewarm, so it stays effective. The sanitizer's consistency used to be one highly problematic thing while launching the new supply system. The liquid version seemed to be way more convenient for the plumbing, since it's not much different from water. Unlike the liquid form, the gel consistency left in the pipes kept drying off, leaving a nasty film-like coat. Ever notice that sticky rim around the dispenser? Every time people would turn on a faucet, the gel-like substance left inside the pipes dried out almost instantly, creating a kind of growth inside the pipe. At a certain moment, the pipe got completely clogged, so the liquid version was chosen. Recently, they tried reintroducing the gel version, which got seriously improved. It required some new special pipes, but it was a success. The thing is that gel is way more economical. Liquid stuff flows out, and we often don't even notice it, while gel gets out of the pipes more slowly. Okay, I see you're famished. Want to have an apple? Hey, don't forget to wash it before eating. Turn off the faucet. The water to wash the fruit is over there in the tank. Sanitizers are a total no if you need to wash vegetables and fruit. They're toxic and leave a film on the food as well as get inside it, making it unsuitable for eating. And if there's a wax coating on apples, then only very hot, almost boiling water can dissolve it properly. If anyone tries to make their apple super clean by rubbing some sanitizer in it, they're going to end up having an apple covered both with wax and sanitizer. Tastes bitter. Ugh. All right. Let's say you're exhausted and a hot shower seems to be the only thing that can help you now. Well, unless it's a sanitizer shower. You already feel stinging pain and all the small wounds, cuts, or even scratches that you might have. The shower gel just won't get foamy. It's so hard to mix it with gel sanitizer. Feels like you're covered with jelly, like a big buttery loaf of bread. Oh, here's some foam, finally. Hey, how are you supposed to wash it off? Remember to never, ever open your eyes in such a shower. Oh no, you've just done it! Oh, I know, it hurts really bad. Here's your towel and some lukewarm water. Rinse your eyes. Don't worry, there won't be any permanent damage. Only an awfully unpleasant experience. Oh my, is that your skin? It's all cracked and dry. And there's also a rash. The skin's peeling off, as if you were a huge lizard ready to say goodbye to its old hide. The barrier of your skin is made of proteins and lipids. When too much alcohol is rubbed onto your skin, this barrier gets stripped, unless you moisturize properly. 
after such a shower or bath, you'd probably need another one with moisturizing lotion to heal your skin. That shower didn't feel great. Your skin is super rough to the touch, and it's all cracked, rashy, and itchy. Even if you feel completely fresh every time you go out of the shower, that freshness is the alcohol evaporating from your skin's surface, making it drier every single time. You'll never be actually 100% clean. The thing is that a water plus soap combo acts differently. When these two act together, soap basically lifts all the dirt, dissolving excess sebum and all the other things from the skin surface. And then water washes it all away. Sanitizers can't do that. They may seem to have cleaned all the visible and invisible things that make your, let's say, hands dirty. But no matter how much sanitizer you pour, fats, sugar, food residues, and many others are here to stay unless you actually wash them away. The main idea of any sanitizer is to help you get rid of the bacteria. Unfortunately, the bacteria will get stronger and less afraid of sanitizers with time. Plus, the sanitizer dried skin gets cracked which also weakens your defense against germs and bacteria. Here comes another problem. On the one hand, you'll never be 100% clean with a sanitizer shower. On the other hand, you risk being too clean. Sometimes being dirty isn't bad at all. Sanitizers are a bit too good at helping you fight the germs, getting rid of both bad and good bacteria. They often affect microbiomes and can even make us less sensitive to antibiotics. So if you use a sanitizer multiple times a day, not to mention a shower on a daily basis, your immune system will be much less productive because it'll get used to sanitizer doing all the dirty work. Anyway, sanitizers could be great if they were used for flushing toilets. When you flush, germs spread all around the bathroom, creating a sort of germ cloud, rising almost three feet around the toilet. The droplets in this cloud contain tons of viruses that people inhale, and that can lead to unwanted consequences. A sanitizer flush probably wouldn't help get rid of them all, but it's still better than just flushing with water and no disinfection at all. A toilet is probably the only place where sanitizer could be way more useful than normal water. Compare a regular water flush with a sanitizer flush. The first one covers you from head to toe with bacteria while the second one doesn't even let the bacteria out. There are probably some, but most of them get in contact with alcohol that the sanitizer flush contains. This is probably the cleanest and safest flush you've ever had. A sad thing is that hand sanitizer can be a reason why the pH level of your skin changes. Sanitizer pH level is usually seven or somewhat higher, so it might be a bit too alkaline. Our skin, in turn, tends to be more acidic, with a usual pH range of 5.5 and 6.5. It's recommended to use gloves when using tap sanitizer for someone who needs to wash the floors or something. That's another reason why most people avoid standard home showers and opt for home water tanks. There's no point in washing your body in a rubber suit designed for such a shower. Anyway, no hand rub can ever replace actual water and good old soap even in 2150. Sanitizers can help you finish those germs, lasting for up to six hours. It could be cool though, to have an extra faucet with hand rub flowing out of it just for sanitary needs. But we don't wanna have all the water replaced. A freshly brewed coffee faucet sounds better. How about that? <laughs>